isomeric relationships between molecules. That's what we're going to study in this lesson. We're going to go through and examine several different pairs of molecules and determine if there is a relationship between them. Or maybe they're just different compounds. Maybe they're exactly the same compound. Or maybe they're one of the different types of isomers. Now, we'll kind of look at two major strategies for accomplishing this task, and we'll kind of go through and figure out when one strategy might be more appropriate or easier to use than the other. Now, we're kind of getting towards the end of this chapter on isomers and stereochemistry, and uh, everything we've learned up until now, all the different vocabulary and the definitions, how to assign R and S is going to prove useful to us for the task at hand. Now, if this is your first time joining me, my name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is simply to make science both understandable and maybe even enjoyable. Now, this is my brand new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a lesson. All right, so let's dive right in here. So looking at a couple of structures, when you're trying to figure out the relationship, there's two questions you really want to start with in asking yourself is, one, do your structures even have the same formula? Because if they don't, well, they're just different compounds. And if they do, well, then all the rest of the options are on the table. So if we look at like this first one here, so we've got two structures here, and this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seventh carbon right here, and it's saturated. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, and it's also saturated. And so these are gonna both be being saturated, C7H16 for a formula. And so we can get rid of the option of them being different compounds. They're not different compounds. Now they might be the same compounds, so they might be identical, or they might be one of the different types of isomers. So the next question is, do they have the same bond connectivity? And if I find my longest chain here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And for this one, it'd be one, two, three, four, but we'll go up here, five, six. And in this case, there'd be a methyl group attached to the third carbon in from one end. And for this one, there'd be a methyl group right here attached from one to from the third carbon in from one end as well. And so what we've discovered then is these are both some form of three methyl hexane, and therefore they've got the same bond connectivity. So once we've done that, then we're going to kind of take a look at these and say, can we visually kind of tell the relationship here? And no, they're not drawn in such a way we can figure out. Notice this one here, you can kind of tell that these are mirror images and we'll kind of take that visual inspection approach. Uh, it's definitely gonna be more helpful to us on this one, but on this one, it's not super helpful. And so the other route to go when you have chiral centers is simply to assign R and S. That'll make your life a lot easier. So in this case, if we take a look at our chiral center here. So this would be priority number one, this would be number two, this would be number three and we'd make our circle and it's a right-handed turn, but the hydrogen not drawn in is on a wedge. And so instead of right-handed turn meaning R, we're on the wrong side and a right-handed turn here is going to mean S. And so this is specifically S3-methylhexane. Go do the same thing on this one. And this is priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. And as we go around in a circle, that is a left-handed turn. And the number four priority is the hydrogen not drawn in, and it is in the back. And so a left-handed turn does indeed mean S like it normally does. And what we've discovered now is that these are identical. They are both S 3-methylhexane. All right, so let's take a look at the next one here. And once again, we, we're going to ask, do they have the same formula? And yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. There's a hydroxyl group second from the end in both cases. So not only do they have the same formula, but they also have the same bond connectivity. Now, one thing that's an immediately obvious here is that these are mirror images of each other. And a lot of students, the moment they see mirror images, they're like enantiomers. Well, you got to be careful. A compound and its mirror image are enantiomers if it's an example of a chiral compound. But if it's an achiral compound, then an achiral compound and its mirror image are exactly the same thing. It's only a chiral compound and its mirror image that are enantiomers. So we got to be careful. But in this case, we do indeed have a chiral center right here. So he's bonded to an OH, he's bonded to the carbon of a methyl, the carbon of this uh, longer chain, and then a hydrogen. So he's got four different groups. And that's the only chiral center. And it turns out if you've got one chiral center, your chiral, done. So if you've got more than one chiral center, there's a chance you might be one of those exception meso compounds, but with just one chiral center, you're chiral. So this is chiral, and this is the mirror image, and the mirror image of a chiral compound is it's enantiomer. And so these indeed are enantiomers. Now, if you wanted to assign R and S to figure this out, you could do the same thing as well. And so once again, they have the same formula, they have the same bond connectivity. And so having the same formula, they're not different compounds. Having the same bond connectivity, they're not constitutional isomers. So the question really comes down to, are they identical enantiomers or diastereomers? 
And in this case, we'll go through and assign R and S. So the hydroxy group's definitely number one. This carbon's number two. This carbon's number three. So it looks like a left-handed turn, and the lowest priority group is a hydrogen that's not drawn in, but is a dash. And so a left-handed turn, when your lowest priority group is in the back, means S. Great. Same thing on the other one here. So oxygen's number one. This carbon's number two. This carbon's number three. There's also the hydrogen in the back. In this case, it's a right-handed turn, and a right-handed turn with your lowest priority in the back means R. And so we can see that our only chiral center is in the opposite configuration, only giving us confirmation that they're in antimers. But in this case, it was a lot faster just based on how they were drawn to visually look at them and be like, oh, they're mere images. And if I can determine that it's chiral, then they're in antimers. All right, now let's take a look at the next pair of structures here. And uh, in this case, we can say, do they have the same formula? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons, a chlorine and a bromine, a chlorine and a bromine. They're both saturated. Cool, they've got the same formula. Okay, so they're not different compounds. So in this case, do they have the same bond connectivity? Well, in this case, we've got a bromine attached third carbon in from the chain and then the chlorine at the fourth. Bromine third carbon in, chlorine at the fourth. So they do have the same bond connectivity. And that means, again, they're either going to be identical or they're either enantiomers or diastereomers. Now, first thing we should ask ourselves then, are they drawn in such a way that we can, just from visual inspection, figure out the relationship? And not too easily. It's, it's hard to tell if they're mirror images or not. It's hard to tell if they're in, you know, we just got different rotational conformations of the carbon carbon bonds that makes that difficult. And so once again, we're just going to assign R and S to the chiral centers to figure this out instead. And in this case, we've got two chiral centers where the bromine and chlorine are attached. And for this one, the bromine's number one, this carbon over here with the chlorine's number two, and this carbon's number three. And going around in a circle, hydrogen is in the back, so that's number four. And a right-handed turn with the hydrogen in the back means R. So we'll go to the other one here. Chlorine's number one, the carbon with the bromine's number two, this carbon's number three. And in this case, we've got another right-handed turn. And there's a hydrogen not drawn in in the back. He's number four priority. And a right-handed turn with your number four priority in the back, again, means R. So they're both in the R configuration. Let's go take a look at the other one here. So bromine is definitely number one, yet again. So carbon with the chlorine number two. And this carbon up here is number three. And it's a right-handed turn, but the hydrogen not drawn in is the wedged bond. And so in this case, a right-handed turn doesn't mean R. It means S instead. And so right off the bat, I can see where it was R over here. It's S in this molecule instead for the analogous chiral center. So these are not identical at the very least. We can say that so far. Now let's figure out the other chiral center. Again, chlorine is number one, carbon with the bromine number two, this carbon number three. And our circle again is a left-handed turn. But once again, the hydrogen is the wedge bond. And so instead of being S with a left-handed turn, so uh, in this case, it's going to be R instead. And now I can see that one chiral center was the same and one was in the opposite configuration. So they're not mirror images, so they're not enantiomers, and therefore must be diastereomers. Again, when you've got multiple chiral centers, so all chiral centers have to be in the same configuration for, uh, provided they've got the same bond connectivity anyways, for them to be identical. All of them have to be in the opposite configurations for them to be enantiomers. But if some are the same and some are opposite, that's when you're gonna have diastereomers. All right, look at this next one here. And a lot of students jump the gun on this one and they look at this and they're like, oh my goodness, look at that mirror right there. It's reflected right across the mirror and students just often associate mirror with enantiomers and they're done. So, but again, a compound and its mirror image are enantiomers if the compound is chiral. So in this case, starting from the beginning, same formula, yeah, same formula, same bond connectivity. That's not too hard to see. So the question then becomes, uh, can you tell by visual inspection? Well, I can tell by visual inspection that they are mirror images. However, if we look at these, they both have these two chiral centers and we could assign R and S if we wanted to, but you might more quickly realize that these guys have an internal mirror plane, a sigma plane. And as a result, even though they have chiral centers, they are achiral compounds. And specifically, that makes them a meso compound. Now, I didn't have to actually figure out that they're meso. I just had to figure out that they're achiral. And once I realized they're achiral, uh, an achiral molecule and its mirror image are identical. 
So in fact, you could kind of notice that all we have to do is kind of rotate this around 180 and it would line up perfectly with this. It would superimpose with this. They are definitely exactly the same structure. All right, one more example here, and this one with Fisher projections. And if I look at this again, my first question is, do they have the same formula? And I can see one, two, three, four carbons, and all of them have an OH. Four carbons, all of them have an OH. Yeah, they have the same formula. Same bond connectivity? Yeah, it's four carbons, and every single one of them, four carbons in a chain anyways, and every single one of them has a single OH. So they have the same bond connectivity. So from here, are these drawn in such a way that we can just compare them based on visual inspection? And the answer is yes. You could get away without having to assign RNS. It's a, kind of a nice feature of Fisher projections as well. So because I can tell that this chiral center right here is in exactly the same configuration. OH on the right, H on the left. CH2OH down below, and then the rest of the molecule up above. So they're the exact same configuration. However, the one right above it they're in opposite configurations because the only difference is that the H and the OH trade places. And as long as all you have to do is trade two groups places on a chiral center, you learned, then you get the inverted version. And so we have one chiral center in the same configuration, one chiral center in the opposite configuration for two molecules that have the same bond connectivity. And so one chiral center the same, one opposite, those are diastereomers. Cool, and so we didn't even have to assign RNS. Now you could have, and very easily, we could just go through and assign these chiralities. And so for the top one here, we could go oxygen's number one, this carbon down here would be two, this carbon up here number three, hydrogen's number four. And so we go around with a right-handed turn, but with the lowest priority group on the horizontal, that's a wedge. It's instead of a right-handed turn meaning R, a right-handed turn is going to mean S. Same thing with the other one here, one, and in this case, uh, carbon up above is two, carbon down below is three, and we're gonna be making a left-handed turn. But once again, the hydrogen, the number four priority, is on the horizontal, which is a wedge for a Fisher projection. And so instead of a left-handed hand, left -handed turn meaning S, your left-handed turn is going to mean R. So, and if you assign them on the other one here, you'd still get this as R exactly the same way, but this one you'd get as R instead of S. And you'd realize, oh, one's the same, one's the opposite, Indeed, they're diastereomers. They are non-superimposable, non-mirror images. If you benefited from this lesson, consider giving me a like and a share. And before you move on, make sure you get some practice on this. Super, super important. It's the kind of thing that you don't master without a heavy dose of practice. And if you're looking for the study guides for this lesson or for some practice problems involving this, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.